Hi, today I'm going to give you a 100% honest estimation and representation of what it's like to be single because I have that experience. I've been single since 2017. Before then, I was in two long-term relationships. The first, my first marriage was about seven years, but we were together for more than that. We were together for about 10 years. And the second long-term relationship was about seven years. So I've been on both sides. I've been in the long-term building something together side of the equation. And I've been in the single side of the equation. And which one do I prefer? Can you guess? <laughs> I'm doing a video telling you how great it is to be single. Ah, yes, I might be on the single side of the equation. So what do I like about being single? The number one thing is simplicity. I can do whatever I want. I make my own schedule. I do my own research. I make my own choices and I go about my business as I see fit. Whatever's best for me, for the situation, for whatever I'm doing. So in a relationship, that's not always an option. Frequently, it's not an option because you have to coordinate schedules. You have to negotiate what's more important for whom and these things lead to conversations to say the least a lot of times they lead to fights if the issue is big enough for one or the other person so I just don't have that level of stress and if you have kids oh my god then that complex complexity multiplies by the number of kids you have none of that exists for a single person person without children <laughs> we're free to do whatever we want interestingly society doesn't view us as the happiest people on statistically on the books yes statistically there are studies done that show the happiest segment demographic of the population is professional financially independent women without children oh my god could anybody possibly imagine why that is? 46% <laughs> of the population over 18 in the US is single. And yet society has these crazy notions about singlehood. Like if you're single, something must be wrong with you. Are you crazy? Are you stupid? Are you like nobody wants you maybe you just can't have any kids maybe you just don't know what's good for you like there's all these judgments once i was asked by somebody oh my god that was like crazy this person asked me you're single you're how old why does anybody want you that's what she told me why does nobody want me <laughs> And I'm like, oh, has it occurred to you that I am the one that doesn't want anyone? <laughs> oh my God, the stuff you hear when you're single. So even something as simple as getting a good night's sleep, when you're with somebody else sharing a bed, you get waken up. You know, you got to put up with their snoring, huffing and puffing, them kicking you, sweating in the bed, whatever the hell they're doing. They stink. <laughs> I don't know, hopefully not, but you never know. <laughs> People get pretty weird hygiene habits. <laughs> so none of that exists. I go into my own bed. Like the only thing that wakes me up once in a while is my dog that jumps up and wants attention. And I love to give my dog attention. <laughs> I wouldn't be so generous and charitable with the human waking me up in the middle of the night wanting attention. <laughs> so good night's sleep helps you function better. It's good for your mental health. You can make decisions better. There's so much science out there on why you should get a good night's sleep. And yet in relationships, you frequently don't. I've had clients who basically live with husbands that snore. Like they just keep them up all night. And these women don't, they, they feel bad to even get up and go and sleep in the guest bedroom or something. Because we're a couple. We're supposed to sleep on the same bed. Like who says that? Like why? Why would you compromise your health? That's a health issue. If you can't sleep, 
Why would you compromise your health because somebody says you're supposed to say like, are they with you in the bedroom? Are they actually, like, anybody knows where you're sleeping? Anybody cares? Seriously. So another thing about singlehood is that we only get to spend time or mostly occasionally we can't no matter what, but we get to spend our time with the people that we like to spend time with. Like when you're in a couple situation, you have friends crossing over. And then if you're married and you have your spouses, relatives to deal with, and you don't always like them, you don't always click with them. They might be completely different from you politically. You're seeing the world in different ways. So there may be many reasons why you don't enjoy these people, but you have to devote time to them because you are the wife or you are the husband. You are in the couple, so you're obligated to show up and perform <laughs> for the peace in the family. Okay, but single people don't have to do that. <laughs> we can do whatever we want to do with whoever we want to spend time with. So our time is better spent. That's my take on it. You might have a different take on it, but you can't tell me that sharing Thanksgiving dinner with your, your spouse's crazy uncle <laughs> is what you signed up for when you got into this relationship <laughs> and that you have nothing else better to do but that. <laughs> <laughs> so simplicity time spent the way you need to spend it the way you want to spend it most productively you want to work on your career you can you want to work on your hobbies you can you want to go on vacation with your friends girlfriends boyfriends and have a great time you can in a couple you have to negotiate where are we going to go on vacation and how are we going to spend the money and what accommodations we need to get. And inevitably people have fights during vacation time because shit happens. One gets drunk, makes an ass out of himself or herself, or one wants to go this direction. The other one wants to go the other direction. One is navigating, the other one's driving. They fight over missing the turn. People are fighting on vacations when they're supposed to be having fun. Not the single people. The single people are having a great time on vacations because they don't have to deal with any of that. They just do what they want to do, go wherever they want to go, see what they want to see, spend as much money as they want to spend. Nobody tells them nothing. <laughs> and yes, simplicity. And somebody says, yeah, but it's so much nicer to share your vacations with someone. Oh yeah, to share your vacations with someone, the same person that keeps you up at home because they snore and now they're gonna keep you up during your vacation. <laughs> and then somehow you still have to be responsible for the laundry on vacation. I don't know. There are good times in every relationship. I'm not trying to say like, oh, relationships suck 100%. No, no, no. There's good and bad in relationships. But overall, being single is awesome compared to the stress, the compromise, and everything it takes to be in a relationship. And why do people choose to be single? Because of all this. Because maybe they prefer to work on their careers. Maybe they prefer spend more time with their friends. Maybe they can't find somebody they like. So let me give you four things, statistically, four qualities of a person that uh, statistically would improve your chances of having a great relationship. And so you can reflect to see if you are that person or you can reflect to see what you wanna be looking for. So the first quality of a person that statistically improves the chance of having a good relationship is being independently happy, satisfied with their life outside of a relationship. They're already enjoying their own lives. That is important before you show up in a relationship. People who are happy before they show up in a relationship tend to continue to be happy in a relationship while people who are constantly complaining and looking for validation affirmation support security unhappy those people 
if that's the way they are before they're in a relationship, that's how they're going to be in a relationship. The second quality you're looking for in a person is secure attachment style. So I don't know if you know about attachment styles. If you don't, drop a comment down below and I'll make a video about attachment styles. But people with secure attachment style they're not clingy, they're not jealous, they are very balanced, they give you enough attention so you feel loved and cared for and seen and heard, but they also give you enough space so you can be your own self. They are their own selves. They're not very neurotic, they're not neurotic at all, they don't think, take things personally. They think in terms of we, not me, and they, you know, that's what makes them great for relationships. So they're kind of a stabilizing factor in a relationship. The third thing you're looking for is one of the five personality traits, and that's conscientiousness. Those people have your back. They show up. They do what needs to be done. They're literally conscientious about what they do, who they do it with. They are respectful. They are respectful responsible and reliable the fourth thing that you need in a person is a growth of mindset so growth mindset is the kind of thing that drives people intrinsically motivates them to keep getting better to learn more to be more skillful in their relationships in their communication in their careers and whatnot they constantly go growing so four of these things together in a person increases the chance that you're going to have a great relationship now do the math how many people out there are one two or three of these things let alone all four of these things <laughs> like just the secure attachment style is like 25 percent of the population <laughs> now you want like a happy person with a secure attachment style and conscientious who's also a growth mindset like you know it's a tall order but if you're already that person and you're single what is your motivation to hook up with somebody, just anybody, just to have somebody around in your orbit so you're not alone? That is the worst excuse ever. So now there are some statistics that show that being in a relationship is more favorable to the man than it is to the woman if you're in a heterosexual relationship. So men in relationships do better than men single women single who when they're independent and financially secure do better than if they're in a relationship with a man so why is that you ask because guys mellow out when they're in a relationship they accept the responsibility now they have kids and wives whatever they need to take care of people and things so they become more responsible and stop doing crazy shit like jumping off buildings and driving their cars too fast i don't know but their life expectancy increases while for women it's the opposite because they have to expend extra effort to take care of more things and people so if you already have a career and if you already highly educated and you have all that professional set of responsibilities. Now you have all these domestic set of responsibilities. And maybe you also have kids. So that adds to your plate of things to do. And it just becomes more stressful for women. And also because men degrade faster as they get older. Women have to take care of them. So we all know women have longer, excuse me, longer life expectancy than men. So most women end up being caretakers for their husbands uh down the road <laughs> and so a lot of older gentlemen when they lose their spouses they're immediately looking for somebody else younger because they literally want someone to take care of them and they by then hopefully they have the financial s stability and the means to sort of lure somebody in <laughs> with a few years of good time so hopefully later they'll take care of them <laughs> there's all these weird calculations people make in their heads when they're looking for relationships it's not all about love and fairy tales people it is not you know if you're watching this channel i have a degree in psychology and i'm a life coach i talk to people in relate in relationship problems a lot and i i know that's not like uh, it's sort of like a very narrow focus 
sample group <laughs> so you know i'm sort of seeing like the worst parts of relationships but you know outside of my professional life experience i also have friends and families i see what happens all the fights that happen in in relationships and all like women get together and do nothing but bitch about their husbands and i'm like okay great you guys like you are you know diffusing the tension and like blowing off steam but really you have these problems in your relationship <laughs> like I, I can't relate i don't have any of these problems I, i'm good <laughs> i wake up in the morning and i know what i'm doing today and i got a smile on my face and i go about my business you know the worst thing that can happen to me somebody can say no to something i want to do and i'll be like okay and i'll just move on like i don't have to negotiate it's great <laughs> uh, but you know other things that i see is as um, people's relationships mature and so now they're looking like 10 15 years 20 years in a relationship they're like no longer a couple really like the intimacy is gone um the attraction is gone they're just roommates doing tasks together like raising the kids or you know doing things for the house it's like they're sharing domestic responsibilities but they're no longer like in each other's hearts like they used to be and okay that's fine they should still have some love but often they don't have any it's just literally routine it's like they don't know what to do by themselves so they stay together like they can't figure out how they're going to split the house and the kids so they stay together they don't want to go through the motions of you know getting divorced because it sounds expensive and a headache which it is so they stay together um they're like they're avoiding pain and they're committing themselves to mediocrity period when they don't really know what's on the other side like maybe if you do dissolve this relationship because it's lived its course and it's fulfilled its purpose you can then find a better relationship or find happiness being single <laughs> how about that but they don't know what's on the other side so they put up with the known aggravators and complaints and discomfort emotionally and so on just because that's known rather than you know going through the trouble of finding out what's on the other side so it's kind of sad really like people commit themselves to mediocrity and to unhappiness because they're too lazy to find a better way hell even try to like fix your relationship so often they'll cheat oh my god so many people cheat <laughs> like so many people cheat and it's not it's more common than anybody would would imagine or expect because because it's so easily available even things like you know, you're on your phone like you're having an emotional affair you're swapping naked pictures with some other person that's not your partner nobody knows about it nobody has to know about it because you're on your phone so you technically am i really cheating or i'm just spicing up my life to make myself feel better because at home it's boring and blah 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 and and yeah and guys are the stereotypical thing guys are, oh the wife got fat and she's not sexy anymore i'm not attracted to her anymore well do you think she's attracted to you i mean look at you are you still your handsome fit 20 or 30 year old that you used to be no you're like a middle-aged goofy sloppy dude like why do you think she should be attracted to you you're not attracted to her you find her repulsive or whatever so that justifies you to go and like do some other stuff on the side but what if she feels the same about you like are you okay with her doing the same thing yeah you gotta think about it so then people realize the other person's cheating then all the drama the betrayal then they go like half the time it's like oh shit i put all my best years into this marriage and you cheated on me and and 
and I've been putting up with your crap just so we can stay together, but you've been cheating on me. Oh, man. As a single person, I get to avoid all of this happening. <laughs> and so sometimes people say, you know, like, oh, oh that, that usually comes. That usually comes from guys who are trying to get me involved with them. And I'm like, uh, no, because I'm looking at them and I'm like, they're not checking all the boxes that I need them to check that are like the absolute necessaries, <laughs> let alone the wishful thinking, <laughs> right? Um, but so they will tell me like somebody who's got like more experience with therapy or whatever, they'll be like, are you an avoidant? Are you, are, are you afraid of intimacy and relationships? I'm like, no, I'm just afraid of your bullshit because I can spot your bullshit a mile away. <laughs> I just don't want to get involved. <laughs> but, you know, uh, maybe we can have sex sometimes. That's good. Because <laughs> that's the other part. It's like, well, you know, I need intimacy. And people Im immediately imagine intimacy. It's like, oh, you got to be naked for intimacy. I'm just going to roll my eyeballs like this on that one and not comment. <laughs> and so more perspectives on being single. What is your experience? I'd like to hear. Uh, what do you prefer? Do you prefer to be single? And why are you single? Comment below, like this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Subscribe. Thank you.